Hey everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's video, we are gonna make something so fast. This might be the fastest thing you've ever made. I know it's the fastest thing I've ever made, but it's something you're gonna wanna make a hundred of, I promise. Don't even, don't even doubt me on that one. Today, we're gonna make the Not Your Mama's Headband and this pattern comes to us from Minnie in the Mountains. Now, let me just tell you guys, I have worn fabric headbands like this on the channel for videos and every single time I do, I get flooded with questions. Did you make your hairband? Did you make your headband? Did you make it? How did you make it? And I never had made them. <laughs> Those were purchased by other people who had made them. But then Minnie in the Mountains came out with this template, came out with this design, and you guys, this is like the easiest thing you've ever made, I promise. It will take you, the video will take you longer to watch than it will take you to make this headband, I promise. This is so quick. And it's so easy, so let me just show you. It is a fabric headband, just like this, and it has a little bow on it. That's it. It's three pieces of material, one piece for the main headband, two pieces for the bow. I am not using any interfacing. Now I did, let's see, I think it was this one. On this one here, I did use like a woven interfacing, and I'm using all quilt cotton on my headbands. Nothing else, no vinyl, no cork, definitely no nylon, no water resistant canvas, just quilt cotton. And on this one right here, I did use a woven interfacing to kind of beef it up. Personally, I love the look and the feel of just the quilt cotton, and that's it. I think that it looks great, it feels great, it is very, you know, nice. This is one that my daughter, Mila, came up with. She picked out the material for it. She's already worn it to school once. She loves it so much. This one is mine because it's like a little spooky one. You see, let me show you. Can you see those little ghosties on the bow? And then, then the stripe is just so cute, isn't it? So let me show it to you on. I'm gonna put it on. I'm a big fan of headbands. I feel like headbands are just such a fun accessory because you don't have to worry about your hair so much. Hopefully, am I too tall? There we go. I'm not a tall person, so I should not be too tall. So make sure I'm in the shot. So here is what this one looks like on. I will tell you that I have a few different headband options. Um, this one that I'm wearing right now, the insert is this like wire headband. This one here that Mila prefers, my daughter, um, it's more of a thicker plastic headband. You could also use these like fabric headbands, really whatever you can find. I got all these off of Amazon, so I'll have links down below for them. Very, very affordable. And then you get you get kind of a lot when you buy them, but trust me, you're gonna be making a bunch of these. Like, wouldn't this be fun to make a bunch of matching headbands if you're going on a trip or as the holidays are coming around? You can make the whole family, like all the members of the family could all have the same headband for Christmas. I think that would be so cute. Or actually, you know what would be really, really cute? Like if you make, I'm just thinking about my kids and me, and it's like, oh, I should make, like this is like a Halloween one. I should make one with like some glow in the dark material and we can wear them when we go trick or treating or if we go to like a Halloween party or like a haunted house, something like that would be so sweet. So like I said, these are very, very easy, very quick. You're gonna love them. If you're brand new to sewing, you've never sewn anything with a zipper or anything before, this is a pattern I would highly suggest you try. Mila has already pulled out her fabric. She's gonna be making a few of these. This is a great kid project. This is a great slumber party project. So if you have like a bunch of girls over, they're all staying the night, you have all the girls pick out the material, then you tell them to go watch a movie and then you can make them all headbands. And what a fun, easy, quick little, little goodie from their sleepover. So thank you so much to Minnie in the Mountains for allowing me to use your pattern on this channel. At the time of filming, there is not a full written out pattern, but I did speak to the author and she is planning on working on one, or she is currently working on one and planning on having one come out. So if you've never written a pattern before, it takes a lot of time and it's a lot, it can be very overwhelming. So you don't need the pattern, but I know a lot of you guys would really love to have a printed off pattern for this. So I'm just letting you know if it's not already out, it's coming. If it is already out, I will have it down in the description of this video. So if you're new to the Oakler's YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If you love this pattern as much as I do, please make sure you let the author know. You can message her, I'll have her socials linked down below. You can also leave her a comment on this video, letting her know how much you love it and that we would like to see more patterns because if this is something you start with, I, I mean, there's a lot of other fun things we can make starting with this idea. So leave a comment down below if you want more patterns. All right guys, let's get started. So because this pattern is so simple um, and requires so little, we can kind of just talk about everything in one go. So first of all, let's talk about the fabric. You're gonna need one piece of fabric that's going to be for the headband portion and then two cuts of fabric that's gonna be for the bow. 
Uh, like at the most, you need like a fat quarter of each one of these. This is super scrappy. You can definitely use one piece of fabric for all three of these cuts, or you can use a different piece for each one of these, which is also really fun. So like I said, ultimate scrap buster. You can see I have the template over here. I really suggest that if you're gonna make a bunch of these, you go ahead and get the acrylic templates. I believe Carolina Little Stitches is doing acrylic templates for this. I'll have a link down below for them. Um, I know for me personally, like I want to make so many of these and after tracing the paper after a while, it starts to kind of fall apart. So acrylic templates would be really helpful for this. Next, you're going to need a headband to put inside the headband that you're sewing. Uh, there's a couple different options that I'm using. This is a thicker plastic one and this is like a thinner metal one. Personally, I like the thin metal one because I feel like it's very lightweight and doesn't add any pressure to my head. My daughter though, however, she really likes this thicker plastic one. I think she just likes how it fits on her head and she's not so sensitive to headbands like I am. So I'll have links for both of these down below. To close the end of our little headband piece here, you have a few different options. You could, after you insert your metal or plastic headband into this, you could top stitch. Um, I don't really love the look of that. You could also hand stitch, which is very, very nice and that's what they do in the tutorial for this pattern. There's also options for these adhesives. I happen to have this hot fix adhesive here, which I will be using a lot of for an upcoming quilt project. Um, so this is actually really, really useful for this specific design. We're gonna use the teeniest, tiniest cut off of this. You definitely don't need this much, but if you were interested in a future quilt, project, I would suggest you get some of this now. And then for our tools, there's always lots of plastic clover clips. You're going to need a pair of snips. A stiletto is always really handy. The needle I'm using is a Microtex 8012. It is a bit thick for this material because I'm not interfacing anything. It's all just quilt cotton. So if you can go with a thinner needle than the 8012, I would suggest you do that. I will only be using this Guterman thread today. There's no reason to have a thicker thread. I will not be doing any top stitching today. And then you're gonna need a good pair of sharp scissors. If you have the, what are they called? I cannot remember the name of them right now, but if you have those scissors that have like the, the zigzag on them, I, that's gonna drive me crazy, I can't. Pinking shears, if you have pinking shears, uh, that's gonna be really helpful. However, it's not necessary. Honestly, it's really not necessary. You don't need anything fancy at all for this pattern. You can just use what you got and it's gonna turn out perfect. So make sure you do have an iron and a pressing mat handy for this. Um, if you're using any sort of woven interfacing or anything like that, make sure you add that. I'm gonna be honest, I think it looks great without any sort of interfacing. I think it looks great with just quilt cotton. That's, you know, there's a lot of different materials out there you can play with and a lot of different interfacings you can work with, but if you keep it simple with just the quilt cotton and no interfacing, I'm telling you, it looks so good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half, wrong sides together, long sides together. This is what the designer calls kind of like a memory fold. I think that's what she said. Uh, but it, it is good to do this because in the end, we're gonna want this fold to be nice and crisp on our headband. So I'm just gonna quickly give it a fold like that. Now we're gonna open up that headband piece and we're gonna fold it now long sides together, right sides together, and we're gonna clip along this edge. Make sure you have the curve matched up and you have a nice point on the end. I forgot to also mention a turning tool is going to be required today, nothing too sharp. So if you don't have like a metal turning tool like this, that's nice and blunt, um, a chopstick would actually work really well as well. I'm forgetting to show all the things today, aren't I? I'm also using a little one inch by six inch ruler and an air racing marker. What we're gonna do once we have this clipped is we're gonna go to one end, one of these corners here. Let's measure up one and a half inches from the bottom corner and make a mark. And then you can measure about one inch away from that. So we're making a little opening right here on the curve, uh, but not beyond it. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this raw clipped edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. If you wanna make it a smaller seam allowance, you're gonna have a thicker headband part. I think 5 8 is perfect, but when we're sewing, we wanna make sure we leave this opening open. So start at the very end, backstitch, sew at 5 8 of an inch. Once you get to that first mark, backstitch at that mark, lift up your needle, go over the opening to the other mark, backstitch at the other mark and continue on all the way to the other end and backstitch at the end. All right, once you have that sewn, we're gonna trim down the seam. So I'm gonna trim it down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The only place I'm not trimming the seam down is that opening that we left over on that corner. So I'm just gonna trim around it. And then I'm just gonna trim about a quarter of an inch away from my stitching. 
All right, now I'm gonna go to the corners and I'm gonna trim down the corners. And when you trim down the corners, don't get them too close. Don't, don't cut too close to the thread because this is quilt cotton. It can kind of unravel and create a hole there. And then on these curves here, I'm just gently clipping about halfway through the seam allowance. I'm not getting too close again to the threads because they don't want my fabric to unravel and then cause a problem. So just, just a little half, halfway through the seam marks. All right, now this is kind of the tricky part. You need to turn out everything through that teeny tiny hole that you left here. So just take your time and slowly pull the material out through that hole. This is where a turning tool is helpful. Um, getting started is probably the hardest part. Once you get it going, then you can use your turning tool to really kind of just stuff the material in there and shove it all through. So I'm just gonna use my fingers here to pull it out. So you can see you can kind of stick your finger inside of it and then grab onto the material and pull it through. And because this does not have any interfacing at all, it is much easier. <laughs> if you had woven interfacing attached to this, this part could be a little bit tricky um, with that really small hole, just because the material's thicker. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of like shoving the material up into that, it's like sausage casing or something. Just kind of shove it up there. And then I'll use my turning tool to kind of push it through. So you see, you just push it all in there like that. <laughs> I wish I knew technical terms for this. And I'm kind of like holding it on and pushing all the material up to the top, kind of like a tube of toothpaste, you know? And then just carefully use my turning tool to push it out. Carefully, carefully, carefully. And then when I get to the end like that, I'm gonna use the more pointy side and again, very carefully insert this into the headband and carefully push out the corners and then kind of run it along the seam. There we go. And then come to the corner over by the opening and push that out too. All right, once you have it turned out, you're gonna to wanna to give it a good press. So on the like straight side of the headband is that fold. And then on the other side is the seam. So that's how this runs. So just flatten it out with your fingers, kind of finger press it. Again, don't worry so much about this, especially if you're not using interfacing. So if you're going all loosey goosey like I am, this doesn't have to be perfect. We want it to be flat, so that's why we're ironing it. But where the seam is exactly, is it's not a big deal because it's gonna kind of twist around anyways when it's on the headband. Okay, so this is what we have now. We still have that teeny tiny opening on the side over here. Just leave that because that's how we're gonna put the headband in. But this part is done. And now we're gonna work on the bow part. So take both of your bow cuts material and lay them right sides together, lining up all the edges. Then just grab some clips and clip along all of the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my opening right here in the center on that curve, and it's about a one inch opening. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm just going right around the curve. And I know it's like, that doesn't seem smart, <laughs> not on the curve. The thing is, is when I turn this right side out, I am gonna be doing a tiny bit of top stitching. I lied in the beginning. There's one, one bit of top stitching. I'm gonna top stitch over this to close this once I flip the bow right side out. I don't want that to be seen though, because I'm not top stitching the rest of the bow. The rest of the bow is gonna stay untop stitched. So this part right here where this little curve is in the center, that's where it wraps around the headband and it ties. You're not gonna see that in the end, so that's why I like to leave the opening there because it's not gonna be seen once the bow's complete. Now the pattern has it stated that you could do like a 5 8 inch seam allowance here just like you did on the headband portion. That's gonna give you a very small bow. I like a bigger bow. Um, I think that using a quarter inch seam allowance gives you a very good size bow. I would even say you could go bigger. So if you wanted to play with these templates a little bit and like lengthen them, I think you could definitely do that. You can make them fatter, longer. Uh, you could have a lot of fun with that. So I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire edge of my bow panels, except for between this little opening right here in the center. There I'm going to start, I'm gonna backstitch, go all the way around, and I'm gonna stop at the other mark and backstitch well. All right, so now when you have the bow sewn, let's just clip off these corners. Again, don't get too close to the thread, because quilt cool cotton, without interfacing, it unravels. So not too close to the thread. And then, I'm trying to find it, so I have my hole here on the left side. So on the other side where there's no hole, I'm just gonna kinda clip halfway into the seam allowance. And you can, I mean, you can kinda clip little slits halfway Wherever there's a curve or a corner, I like to clip into the seam allowance just so the material can spread once it's flipped right side out. So now I'm gonna open up that teeny tiny hole <laughs> and I'm gonna flip my bow right side out. 
again, if you leave a little tiny one inch hole and you only are using quilt cotton, no interfacing, this should not be that difficult. You should be able to easily pull the material out. We like to leave a small hole because then it's, you know, it's less we have to tidy up in the end. So I'm once again going to use my turning tool here to get in there and poke out the bow. Oh, look at these little skeletons. Aren't those cute? I think Halloween headbands are my new favorite thing to make. Oh my word. These are so fun. Cause it's fun. Cause it's like, if you don't, if you, you know, if it's Halloween season, spooky season and you're like, well, I'm not really into like dressing up, dressing up. And I don't want to go like all out with like the pumpkin sweaters and everything, but I want like a little bit of a Halloween flair. These headbands are perfect for that. Cause you just, you can just add some little skeletons on your bow, little ghosts. Okay. So now you're going to roll out those seams and I just kind of go section by section. I'm just rolling out a bit of my bow on the seam and then I'm going to press it down with my iron. And then I'll go to the next section and roll that out and press it down with my iron. And then do the same thing on the other side of the bow. Okay. Once you have your bow nice and flat and you have that teeny tiny opening, I mean, honestly, you don't even have, you know, you need to close it. You, I was going to say you don't need to close it at all because it is so small. Um, but you should close it. If you wanted to use this little piece of hot fix adhesive to close this hole, you definitely could. I'm going to show you how to use it on this thing over here, but I am going to just top stitch right over this itty bitty little hole, just top stitching only where the opening is. All the raw edges are tucked into the hole. So I don't have to worry about any fraying or anything like that. And I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And if you wanted to top stitch around the entire bow, you can definitely do that. That's what, um, that's what they do in the pattern and in the video. Uh, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave that one section. Cause I really like, I like the loosey goosey look of this. I really do. And I like how quick and easy that is. I don't know if you guys can see, but this has like little tiny skulls on the white part and they glow in the dark. I'll try to show, I'll try to show a picture of that somewhere on the screen over here. Cause it is so cool. All right, let's finish up this headband. It's so easy. So I'm going to take out this hot fix adhesive and really it's like a, <laughs> the teeniest, tiniest piece. It's like one inch by a quarter of an inch. That's it. Just super teeny tiny. I'll be honest, it's so small, it doesn't even stay on the paper. Like you see the shiny bit here? That's what we're using. So I'm just gonna set that to the side for just a moment. And now since this is for me, I'm gonna use the metal headband, but you can see, where's the opening? See, you can't even find these things. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'm gonna insert this into the opening and I'll show you both headbands actually. So let's thread this in. And then one part of the fold goes on the front of the headband. The seam goes on the other side of the headband. You just tuck in the ends into the end of your fabric. And that's what this looks like. So you see, and then when we put the bow on, it has a nice tight pinch. You see that because it's such a small headband, it'll have a really tight pinch. Now let me show you the uh, plastic one. So here is this one and, I, and it is comfortable. It is, they're both very comfortable. I would suggest either one of these. These are both great but because it is thicker, once you tie the bow on, you don't have the pinch. You still have a really cool look, but it's not that same pinch. So here are two I've already done. So you see from the top here, they both have the bow and the bow stands out and looks great. It's just the thicker one. I feel like the thicker one kind of showcases the material on the headband more. And then the thinner one really showcases like the bow. I don't know. They both look really good though. So either one's great. Okay. So back to the wire headband, I'm going to insert this in. And then I have this little opening on the end here. Now it is very easy, especially if you're using the wire headband, you could definitely just go and top stitch this and be done. Um, I think it would look fine. You could hand sew it, <laughs> you could glue it. I have this teeny tiny piece of this bonding agent here, and I'm just going to insert it in that hole between the two folded over edges. So both of the edges of this opening are folded in on themselves. There's no raw material poking out anywhere. And the most important thing here is that it's on the folded over edges and the adhesive is not sticking out because I don't want it to stick to my iron. So now I'm just going to grab my iron and I'm going to press right over that spot in like 10 seconds or so. Not too long. You don't want to burn your fabric and you can see it's completely adhered. And as it cools off, it, holds it together perfectly. You never have to worry about it again. So we have the headband attached. Now we're going to grab our bow and you can attach your bow on the very top. 
like that, or you can attach it to the side. You can attach it anywhere and you can move it later. So figure out which side you want to be seen more. Wrap your bow underneath the headband so the two pointy bits are on the top and then just keeping them flat. Don't twist them around too much. Just tie them into a single knot just once, that's all. And then just kind of finagle your ends to get them the way you want. And so you see like if you wanted a bigger bow, you could definitely lengthen the pattern or make it a little bit chubbier. But if you give yourself a nice tight knot here, you'll see you have a really, really cool bow. How stinking cute is that? And so this is more like on the center, but you could just kind of pull it down towards the side if you wanted. So it'd be more on the side of the headband. I love it so much. All right. You're going to make a thousand, right? I mean, we all are. We're going to make a bunch of these and we're going to wear them everywhere. And this is just, this is just now the bag makers staple. Look at these headbands. Okay. I know it's very similar to the one that I'm wearing. However, this one has little, little skulls on it that glow in the dark. So I'm going to put the photo on the screen again to show you that it is so fun. Like I said, Halloween, going trick or treating, it glows in the dark. How cute would that be? You get like a mommy and me matching one. I just love it. It's so, so cute. And you can have a lot of fun with the bow. You can change up the design of the bow. Again, using your seam allowance, a bigger seam allowance is gonna give you a smaller bow. A smaller seam allowance is gonna give you a bigger bow. Play with that, have fun with it. This is just, it's a scrap buster. So you can try something out. If it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. You didn't use a lot of material on it. But I'm telling you, I cannot stop making these. Um, I actually have some fabric pulled out, a little bundle over here of other material to make for my daughter and her friends at school. That's like their school colors. As we get into like homecoming season and kind of like pep rallies and stuff, they wanted to have these really cute little headbands that they could wear that are very unique. I don't know. It's just like, how cool is that? Cause you know, they're going to wear it to school. I mean, Mila already wore one to school and people were like, where did you get that? But you know when they wear like school color headbands, like everybody's gonna ask, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? So I'm just saying, if you make these, be prepared. <laughs> Cause you won't stop at one. You'll be making a lot. So I hope you love making these headbands as much as I do. I hope that they that you are hooked on them so we can all just make all the headbands together all the time. If you have craft fairs coming up, specifically for the holidays, and you're a vendor and you sell handmade goods, I would highly encourage you to add these to your booth. I think that these would be a very easy to sell item and you could have a lot of options and they are very low cost to make. And I think you could mark them up quite a bit and sell them for a very decent price. So as a small business owner who sells in person at craft events, I would highly, highly suggest you consider adding these to your booths. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.